Hello. Today we are making a cat house. I'd like the articles we make to be of practical use. That's why I think of a series of practical articles you can both use at home and present your friends with. I'm talking about cat houses. You all know that they can be of different shapes. I'd like to start the series of tutorials with classical shape of a cat house. Let's call it a half round cat house. I have made a few houses like this have thought over a process and I'd like to share my thoughts with you. A few words on how everything was going. My first cat's house I have tried was made of very thin tubes. It was too laborious and it seems to me that it was not worth it because the article is large so I'd better made it with thicker tubes. I have used too many tubes and it has taken too long to weave it. As well I was weaving it without any base form, so if you look attentively you can notice some unsmooth places. That's why I have thought of uh, how to make the shape perfect while making my first cat's house. I was making the next one on the base form. I decided to make use of all the remainders of color tubes I had. I started weaving on a big bucket. That's why the bottom part is rather straight, while the round part was made on a balloon. At least I was trying to make the top part round. I was experimenting with the window here. The window has come out too small, but I hope that this cat house will find its own anyway. And I have made some conclusions as for the size of a window. The next thing I'd like to draw your attention to I have tried making this cat house without any base form at all. As a result I have gotten a kitty house. I was making it without a base form and the poles of the base were not rigid. That is why the house has fallen inside and become tent shaped. I have made some conclusions as well. And here is my last cat house, the shape of which I like and an example of which I'm going to base this tutorial. This cat house has satisfied me. I have used thicker tubes for it. They seem to correspond to the size of the article. I was weaving around a huge bucket as a base form. Up to this height after which I have placed a big balloon inside and continued weaving around it. It is hard to weave tightly around a balloon, but at least I had a pattern where to direct my tubes. That is why I've selected this shape among all my experiments. So we start weaving a cat house from a round bottom. You can choose any variety of a round bottom you like. As for the number of the tubes, I have tried different variants. And finally I have chosen the following one. I take 16 tubes, place them crosswise. Here I have started with a regular rope without complicating anything. After three rows, I divide the bunches of four tubes into the double tubes. After seven ten rows, I separate each tube. I make sure that the intervals between the tubes do not exceed two, two and a half centimeters. The intervals between the tubes are two, two and a half, almost three centimeters already. 
That's why we insert additional tubes of the bees. I have noticed that with a diameter of uh, 35 centimeters, it is not worthwhile adding a tube to each one. I have tried making it this way here and the intervals between the tubes are too small. The tubes are rather thick. That's why I like the variety where I was adding to every other tube better. So I recommend you this way. And one more thing. Usually at the place of transition we make some volumetric rope. A 3 tube rope or a 4 tube rope. Here I have tried making it, but then I realized that it was excessive because a cat will be lying on it. Even if you put some mattress over it, a cat is going to feel like a pampered princess lying on a pea. So in this case the bottom will be covered with a mattress. Of course we try our best to avoid any unsmooth places, but where we divide the tubes such points happen. So, we add the tubes to every other one, bisect them, and continue weaving up to the required diameter. I've chosen the diameter of the bottom 35 cm. So we face the very points I have mentioned. To make the places of transition unnoticeable, we try to press tightly while weaving. We draw the double tubes we separate as far apart as possible and press very well to make the working tubes unseen and continue up to the required diameter. So we have woven the required 35 centimeters. Now for steadiness I turn the article you can make the transition, but I see that if I make a transition, the tips left will be too short. That's why I just leave the tubes. Look, here I have made the transition and have got a sharp edge, while well, here I have not. Actually, I like both varieties. So you can decide if you need it or not according to the circumstances. So I just leave the poles and continue weaving vertically. Let me tell you a few words about the base form. I do not have a bucket wide like this. So I've gotten used to weaving in certain the skewers for barbecue. We insert the skewers and besides where the tubes left are too short, it is convenient to add longer tubes to lengthen this way with the help of skewers. Then we will weave with two tubes for a while to make the construction more rigid. And uh, we are going to cut the second tubes afterwards. There is a last short tube left, so we insert a skewer and a longer tube together with it. And we using the technique of a direct and opposite rope. Why direct and opposite? Because later we will weave in complete rows, which will make the rope direct and opposite. So, to make the whole article look harmonious, we weave even the complete rows in the technique of a direct and opposite rope. So, we weave about 6-7 rows in the technique of a direct and opposite rope. In the process of weaving, 
bend the skewers toward yourself a little, in order not to let them bend toward inside, to make the weaving straight. I have tried, the skewers make the weaving rather straight even with no base form. Lengthen and continue. So I have woven through. In the next stage, we have to start forming the rays. So we start weaving in complete rows. In order to make the window wide enough, I leave 10 poles unwoven. So I turn and start weaving around in direct and opposite rows, leaving at first 10 poles unengaged, and then leave one pole uninvolved in every row to even raise like this. And then, to make a decorative braid like this, you can watch the tutorial on our site, I insert one additional tube to each pole of contrast color at this very stage. Why do we do it at this very stage? Because afterwards, when we are forming the turns, it will be inconvenient to insert the poles into these loops. It will be easier to shift them up upwards where the wall is higher than to insert into the loops later. That is why I insert at this stage and then start weaving in complete rows, shaping the rays gradually.